we go. One thing I, I want, agree with that. One thing I want people to understand is look at the word demonstration and see what the first five letters are, bro. Words mean shit. Okay? Yeah. D-E-M-O-N. Demonstration. Don't get involved in that shit. It's like demon democracy. Democracy, all that shit. All of these are isms. They're a waste of time. Okay? Mm. All of these capitalism, communism, anarchism even, all of them. Socialism. You name them. Nazism. ISM is at that end of all of them. You know what it stands for? I, Satan, made it. Okay? They are one huge spider web. The complexity, the complexity of this system of things is amazing. You got to give the guy credit. The, give the devil is too. This sucker is a genius, man. <laughs> and I'm going to reveal who he really is, his real name, where he came from. I'm going to reveal a lot of stuff, bro, that people just ought to know. Well, yeah, man. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on and uh, taking your time to talk with me today. And uh, so, yeah, if, uh, if you're ready, that uh, we'll get started. And, yeah, I'll just have you – uh, introduce yourself a little bit. And like I said, this, this show is all about trying to give people the tools. Let me get, I'll give you a little short introduction here. Uh, I'll, and then we'll talk a little bit, uh, do a disclaimer, uh, and then we'll, we'll get into the interview. But, uh, but anyway, uh, welcome everybody to the Meadows and Makers podcast. Uh, I have with me today, Paul McLeod, and he is, uh, coming to us from Mexico uh, he's an expat that's living down there. He's got a little uh, business uh, doing uh, CBD stuff and uh, and other things. Uh, and so we're going to talk to him. <laughs> uh, talk to him about uh, <laughs> CBD is what I know you got going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot uh, anyway. to bring up the presentation yet. I didn't even bring it up yet. I, I can bring it up in a minute. Okay. Uh, but anyway. It's a long one, man. It's a long one. It, it covers a lot of stuff. I should okay, just yeah, put it out uh, there. I'm going to yeah. put it, I'm going to, after this, I'll, I'll load it on my cannabis groups and people can bring it up and y'all can use it. Use okay. it however you like. Anything that uh, I, I put out there, I, I don't claim anything, okay? Y'all use whatever you like. All right. Well, uh, well yeah. So, Paul, um, what I like to have everybody do when they come on the show is just kind of like talk a little bit about uh, your background. I know you're uh, an expat living down there in Mexico, uh, and I guess uh, you're originally from uh, Massachusetts. Is that correct? Cambridge, okay. Harvard, MIT. They were my playgrounds in the 60s and 70s. Oh wow! And That's got to be a ha happening hippies, spot during that time. Hippies, beatniks, flower children, free love, sex, drugs, rock and roll, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were living large. <laughs> All right. And we had all the answers. You guys, you're dealing with the same things we dealt with 60 years ago. You know that 50, 60 years ago? The world ain't changed. You can't. We tried, and then most of us sold out. We went to work for the man. Okay. Then we got to the 80s, and greed was good because Wall Street and Gordon Gecko said so. Oh, fuck, man. That, Come on, man. That's fun. that's funny you tell me that man like my last uh, my last girlfriend uh, sh uh her dad I ha told me the same thing he said he was a hippie but he liked money too much yeah that's what happened man <laughs> they all got done with Woodstock and went home bought a fucking suit and tie went to work <laughs> yeah that's what he said man that's what he that's says. it that's what yeah it's sad but we did and and the thing is the group that I um, invited you to today, yeah, that's going to be an explosive thing, man. When oh, yeah. people start joining that group and they start seeing what our music has been saying for many years, I got a lot of work to do on it. I'm looking for some help on that. I'm looking for a true audio file. You know, probably is going to have to be my age, maybe. You know, to have a basic understanding of the rock and roll from the '60s and the '70s. And there's a real reason why it proliferated back then. And I'll get into that when I well, actually do the I other mean, things, okay? We'll do the other things later. 
Tonight yeah. we'll do cannabis, okay? <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of, uh, yeah, you, you, you end up in, in, in Mexico. Was there a time that kind of like uh, made you make that decision? Where, was it? Did oh, you hell have yeah. A point mortgage that, crisis. Yeah. Mortgage the, crisis. The mortgage crisis. I okay. w had been a realtor. At the time, I was a contractor. And just a couple of years before, I had worked building a lot of houses up in Central Texas. And over the years, I have been uh, president of the local college up there, Distributive Education Clubs of America. I was president there, won a couple of you know, real estate medal, a salesmanship medal at the Texas competition. And I used to teach the, the tutor, some of the kids at the school, at the college, in contract law, real estate, math, a lot of different things. And these suckers stole a house from me, okay? J.P. Morgan and his Chase Malinakas, they stole a house from me. Nobody steals a house from me with my experience. And yet they did. I could fight. I could have fought. I said, screw this the other things led me to the conclusion, it's time to get the hell out of here. That was 2009 when I packed up. And okay. actually, actually, I went golfing for a year, pretty much by myself, just trying to figure out what I was going to do. Yeah. And then in 2009, I came, and I pretty much haven't left. Uh, I have no desire to go back home. Oh, wow. Was that... Uh... Uh, this, some, this is a question I, I end up asking a lot of my uh, guests is that uh, was that the point that you kind of woke up to knowing like what you know, or, or at least questioning what's really going on? Was was that your moment or? Oh, no, I, I already I come back three, in the three decades previous. I knew. So I knew what was really going down. That came back in the 80s. You started to see a lot of this stuff. huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I still went to work. You know, I raised a family. I raised three kids in, in Central Texas. And, um, you know, they're all rednecks. <laughs> the only thing that, you know, distresses me is they are all rednecks. And I'm a big city boy. <laughs> but I did it by design. I didn't want them to grow up where I grew up. I grew up in a pretty bad project. You guys can see this place? I'll talk yeah. a little Let's get a, get a look of our nice little view around here. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, wait till it gets a little darker and it lights up. It's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. Now, now you're in Acapulco, right? Acapulco. I spent the first 10 years in Mazatlan. Mazatlan? Mazatlan. And I hit out. I came to Mexico to die, bro. I really wow. did. Yeah. I, I came to Mexico to die. I was distressed. I lost my family. I lost my business. I lost my house. I had still had another house, but all of the other stuff that I had learned back in the eighties really influenced my decisions. I was in a bad state of mind. Uh, I mean, they pretty much took everything from me. Wow. And they wow. did it again last year. <laughs> wow. They did it on the Mexican side. So. I got wow. enemies, bro. When you speak the truth in a world full of lies, you get enemies, whether you want them or not. Right. Just You guys are going to have to understand that. People are going to hate you when you speak the truth. Don't get mad at them. They just don't know you. Be patient with them. Be loving. Be kind. Maybe by your example, they'll see and they'll change. Yeah, I think that, you know, that that's a really hard problem. Well, it's a really difficult thing for me personally is that uh you know when he when you see a lot of the the stuff that's happening and you can it, it seems obvious to you on on the on on everything that's going on but it's really been built you know all the knowledge that i have now has been built on years of uh questioning and going down rabbit holes and getting to the point where uh where i understand that there's a plan and agenda being rolled rolled out here and it, it is difficult for me personally not to just want to shake people and say, can't you just see this, you know? But, uh, um, they're doing that, bro. <laughs> yeah, and that's not a good approach. And, that and don't work. It doesn't work. And it, it just makes work. you look like the crazy guy. Just be like, yeah. hey, look at this, you know? Uh, oh, Greg, you, you, you got to be a little crazy to go down the holes we go down there, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be nuts to want to know what we have learned, you know? 
or just very curious you know just wanting to know what what's real and what's yeah. you know what's really going on here so oh well, i'm as curious as i get and you know it might kill me <laughs> but you yeah. know a long time ago i i heard a russian proverb that i really enjoyed uh-huh the russians had a proverb they said they would rather be slapped with the truth than kiss with a lie and that stuck yeah, it's an impressive statement. Yeah, not too many people, you know, they don't own that. I own it. You can slap me all you want with the truth, but don't kiss me with no fucking lies. I don't want this. One thing you'll know about me: I might be a little rough and gruff, but I've got a, a long, long history of only speaking the truth. People who know me well, they know. Mister McLeod speaks the truth. When he speaks, you ought to listen to him. Most people don't. And for me being a Sigma, it don't really bother me. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I want you to think about is not just the Sigmas, but look at Carl Jung's 12 archetypes. Okay, yeah. I never really <laughs> paid attention to them since my psych years way back in 78, I guess, is the first time I took psych. But Carl Jung has got 12 archetypes, and I fit all 12 of them. And when I went through the list two months ago, it freaked me the hell out. How the hell can that be? How the hell can I be all of them? And, but they all fit. And same thing with this Sigma. This whole thing about the, the coming back from the ashes, dude, this is true. <laughs> You've seen what my life has been like the last few months, and I got a witness. I got many witnesses. Erwin especially has seen what the hell's been going on. It's pretty weird, man. It's pretty weird. Yeah, well, I mean, we live in a weird, very weird time, I'll tell you that. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, kind of one of my questions was, was going to be, you know, you're down there in Mexico and this whole COVID hysteria is going on. How's uh how's things going down there in Mexico, and how are people taking this whole history? Ah, oh, the Jedi's are winning, man. Only they're the bad guys this time because this mind trick is the biggest shit I ever seen, man. <laughs> it's amazing. But say, you know, they sold us the the globe Earth too, right? For five hundred years. Oh, what the heck? No, nope. yeah, I'm a flat earther too, guys. <laughs> Imagine that, an Air Force guy who used to be in ballistic missile or warning and satellite tracking is a flat earth guy. Huh. Yeah, I know stuff. Oh, golly, did I start looking at that really hard. That hmm. was the last hole I ever went down. I just couldn't believe that that, that lie could have been that mag magnanimous and huge whatever, man. It's like, really? And that was about six years ago when I finally went down that one. And I went down with a vengeance because it was nothing left. I found everything else. It's like, golly, they really lied about that too, son of a bitch. And I couldn't debunk it with my Air Force experience. As a matter of fact, it all just proved conclusively it's bullshit. Hmm. I, have, I have a lot of issues to pay. with the... Too easy to pay. Too <laughs> easy to pay. I was there, man. It's too easy to pay. Well, I kind of like, uh, I, I don't know what it is personally but you know i have very I, i'm very skeptical about the it being flat uh but uh i'm not gonna put anything out of the realm of possibility but okay uh, get, get the pens ready guys here i'm gonna list them okay operation hide down admiral bird operation dominic operation fishbowl nuclear attacks they tried to break through the dome there's actually videos that they have since released on YouTube, you can actually see them shooting the nukes up and hitting the dome. I have read two studies from MIT, University of Colorado. They conclude that there is an impenetrable barrier up there down to the electron level. Nothing in, nothing out. They like to tell us it's the Van Allen radiation belts. Well, how the hell did the astronauts get there? Right? Huh? How did they get through it? Well, I kind of have my own speculation on that. Uh, I, I really feel as if if we did actually get to the moon, that uh, they were using some kind of uh, electromagnetic shielding 
uh, that they they didn't release to the public anyway. Um, if if they in fact did go, uh, there's a lot of a lot of questions about that because of uh, footage that you know NASA's <laughs> been shown that you know they're they're flying. I've seen many of it, man. Supposedly it's... in space, and they're just very close to the Earth Look, in the low Earth orbit. Just... So. Just go check out Eric Dubé, Dubai, however you pronounce it, or Mark Sargent. Either one of them. They are excellent at, at laying it all out. They really are. Mark Sargent's one of my favorites. It's called Flat Earth Clues. He takes some like 10 minute sections. Impressive job that he does. Impressive job. It really is good. So, yeah, yeah, well, but there's lots of proof out there. All you gotta do is just go to the highest point you can, any building, any mountain. And the horizon always rises to your eyes. That's impossible on a globe. Where the hell's the curve? I've been looking for six years. Okay? Doesn't matter whether you're in a plane, you're in a, a weather balloon up 20 miles. Okay? Without a fisheye camera, the GoPros, there ain't no curve. It's flat. Check out the, the guy that Captain John Luke Picard got named after, August, Augustus Picard. Okay, back in the 1930s, took the balloon up about 20 miles, and you know what he said? It's just all flat, all the way around, everywhere I look. <laughs> oh, yeah, they hide all that shit, but that's on the YouTube, too. You can find everything. Well, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting to, to, to look at some of that stuff. And uh, Hey, how we get on flat earth when we're supposed to be talking about cannabis? Yeah, that's, one. spark one up, man. <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> well, that's what I was kind of trying to get to is that uh, you know how how's things uh, going down in Mexico? How's the how are the people handling this situation? I, I've seen some stories down there, but what are you seeing on the ground there? Like uh, Erwin and I, we we ask every single person we meet. Yeah, do you know anybody? And almost without exception, nobody. Yeah. And we met a guy last night. He said he had had it. Okay. Yeah. Who knows? They say the hospitals here are full in Acapulco. They're not. <laughs> Nobody knows. You know, we talk to the taxi drivers. If, if you ever want to know what's going on in a town, talk to the taxi. They got a handle on it. They know what's going on. Yeah. So we're converting them one after one. They're taking their mass off. Uh, also, oh, people are kind of like wearing. They're the paying attention. They know this is this is goofy. They don't know anybody's sick, and they're walking around like an idiot. They get it pretty quick. So are the beaches open up down there? Or, oh yeah. Or people, oh yeah. People uh, are water skiing. Yeah. There's nice. uh, got some of the evening boats just coming back in, and they'll be doing the midnight ones here. They'll leave out of here and go out and around. Because we're kind of on like on our peninsula here. It's yeah. just a very little, it's not an island, but it is connected. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, the town is, it, it's got stuff going. It's its opening, but there's not enough people here yet to really open everything. Okay. Yeah, but life is returning to normal. It had to, and this is, we'll cover in them other things. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, tell me a little bit about uh, what you got going on with your your, your CBD and all this, uh, the company that you got going on. And, uh, well, last year I spent most of it on my backside and yet I, I built a distributor, this network of about 40. A lot of them still keep hidden. <laughs> They're still not all the way unstigmatized, so to speak. Okay. So some of my distributors aren't really, you know, I don't list them anywhere, but they take care of stuff. Okay. Uh, so we, I did that last year. I did a lot of fighting last year, establishing the fact that the products are indeed legal here in Mexico because the Supreme Court said so. Now, they've even said that they, they allow now cannabis for personal development. The problem is that the, the legislature has done nothing. And over three years since the medicine has been made legal and over a year and a half since the recreational has been made legal. So we remain without regulations, so pretty much everything's legal. And okay. I challenge anybody to take me to court anywhere here because I'm ready to go to the Supreme Court and go tell them exactly to clarify. 
because they have said it is a human right to use it, cultivate it, consume it, blah, blah, blah. If it's a human right, then I don't need your regulations, okay? I don't need your permiso to smoke it, to use it for medicine or anything else. So let's clarify. Are you giving us a human privilege or a human right? Okay, so that's what I'm going to deal with. I've been ready for that for a while. But nobody wants it because even all the lawyers here and all the doctors here, they love it. They say, just keep going. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. They'll regulate it someday. They'll try to keep the best stuff off the market. That's what we have. Yeah. They, want to probably, you know, they might want to cap it at around 1% per milliliter. And sorry, but that's just where the magic begins. You know, that 0.3 crap. <laughs> That's why everybody else in the country got thrown out. All the Canadians, Americans, Colombian groups, they were bringing in hemp products, 0.3 or less. And they said that contravened the letter of the law. We allowed medicine and that does not qualify as medicine. Anybody tells you CBD or hemp is medicine, it's not. The THC is the medicine. That's why it got made illegal. That's why it stays illegal because the Rockefeller pharmaceutical fucking monster out there could never have survived with this. That's why they labeled it snake oil. And I wear that label very, very happily. Snake oil sale. So, so yeah, what are the benefits of having the, uh, the THC versus the CBD versus the hemp oil, I guess? Well, hemp is kind of like a supplement. You know, it's like a vitamin. We need it in our diet. They used to feed the hemp to all the cattle, to the chickens, the pigs, the, everything. We used to get it in our meat. We don't anymore. That's led to a lot of sick. We need that hemp. It's very, very good. All right? But the marijuana is the medicine. The THC is the medicine. Any real researcher says that's the medicine. And they say it's the best medicine they've ever found. Bar none. I really, after a year and a half, I don't know of any condition. It doesn't help. It doesn't cure cancer, but it kills the cancer cell. Okay? You can come back. So we recommend anybody who's got cancer, get rid of it, and then you do a, a maintenance. You know? Yeah, I've uh, learned a lot of good things about taking vitamin C, and then, yeah, especially... Uh... Yeah, if you're having trouble eating and, and things like that, I, you know, I've got folks that I know that, uh, yeah, uh, use cannabis to help them eat and just, uh, if they have pain, just get through their pain and all that. I'm one of them. Smoking yep. it, smoking it kept me alive until I found the oils. It was the only thing that gave me an appetite. My wife, Alicia, up in Mazan, she'll tell you, man, I was wasting away. I was a skeleton. Okay. Yeah, I really had gone. I was ready to die last year, bro. I really was. And most of my distributors, most of my friends, family, they don't really know that. Again, Sigma, we deal with it. We just do it. Yeah, and just kind of get it was push it was the- really bad. Right around September 11th, I was ready to toss in the towel, baby. <laughs> oh, man. And and so- I got a new I got repurposed, I guess repurposed. Yeah. That'll have to be covered at a later time because that's a long ass story. <laughs> that's that's the right. life story part of the other things, but we'll cover that later. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I mean. Um, so uh, it's legal here in Mexico, Greg. It's legal. It's like the Wild West right now because yeah, there are that's no what regulations. It seems like. Yeah, because uh, th- there's not very very much government interference in no. the market, right? So there's it's kind of uh, yeah, it's it's a free yeah, market, and, right? And you got to understand the pushback is great. I mean, you know the billions of dollars that are going to be lost by these people. You know, uh-huh. hemp and marijuana. It's the biggest cash crop in the world, bar none. Nothing even close. Okay, you look on, uh, I, I, I used to get, I still get, I guess, all these financials. And last year I was looking at them deep. The analysts came out of me, business systems analysts. That's what I used. So I started analyzing. I look at the financials and I say, son of a bitch, are you kidding? Gold on the stock market is way up here. 
everything else is down here. Pork belly, soy, corn, wheat, blah, 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 barley, everything. Okay, you know where marijuana is? Right up here. Illegal. Yeah. Illegal throughout most of the world, and it's right on the hills of gold. It's the biggest cash crop by far, ever. The opportunities in this thing is unlimited. Colorado is starting to give degrees in cannabis, biology and chemistry. It's a real business. It's a career, but. <laughs> oh, well, and, yeah. I mean, I, I know people that moved to Colorado during, you know, when, once they had legalized it fully recreationally and all that stuff. I mean, that, that we're doing uh, big business, uh, doing, yeah, pumping out CBD oil to the whole country, basically, part, partly CBD oil and then you know other uh recreational stuff once that became legalized but uh but yeah i mean i knew a girl that was gonna go for an astrophysics degree and she ended up working in the cannabis industry yeah yeah because astrophysics would be a waste of time yeah. there ain't no yeah. uh, you get to sp outer space you freaking tell me man oh. well i definitely want to get there someday <laughs> well I, I think there are others that have been trying and they can't break it because <laughs> they're trying to break it. That's part of the other things. We better go away from that for right now. <laughs> Them, <laughs> those operations I told you guys to Google, you better Google. Start yeah. checking out Admiral Byrd. Check well, yeah, I, I, I know a little bit about Admiral Byrd and his, uh, his uh, expeditions to the uh, Antarctica. Yeah. And talking about how he, uh, you know, encountered some kind of, you know, he was flying over and then he came across something that was like it opened up into a new land or something like that. Oh, he said he found all sorts of land down there. He said there's there's mountains of coal down there. How come no business has ever gone down there to get it? Why do they don't want to reap any of all it? He said there's uranium, coal. They found all sorts of shit. You look at a, a show he did, Long Jeans and 50s. He's a guest on there, and they're, they're talking to him. That's about an hour long. And he's revealing all this shit that, that they seen down there. And they buried it all. Nobody goes down there. They made the Antarctic Treaty and said nobody goes down there at all ever. The only land in the whole world that... Well, the, they only, did. like, science expeditions and stuff go down there, right? Yeah. Yeah, you believe science anymore? Oh God! Well, it's, uh, I've, I've it's read turned a scoop. into the scientism, but uh, you should you should see what a former editor of the New England Journal of Medicine wrote when he left. He said the science cannot be trusted at all anymore. It is all based upon who's paying for this the study. Who's bankrolling it? Yeah, that's it. So screw the science. You know? and when you have the ability to create money out of thin air. You're going to buy everything, aren't you? And that's what they did. And Larkin proved it. Look at the the the, the web of of stockholders in all the world's corporations. It's mainly in in the hands of a very few people, you know. Absolutely. I mean, it's complete fraud to print money and charge print money from nothing and then charge and then people charge interest. Us. On it. Oh yeah. That's total. What fraud. a gig if you can total get it, fraud. huh? Total theft, <laughs> total theft yeah. and total fraud. Yeah, it's, uh, of course it is. But then the whole thing is the governments are a oh, fraud. Yeah. The religions are a fraud. The corporations are a fraud. Everything. It's all one gigantic web. And this is what I'm saying. When you when you started like I did at the bottom, it's easy to come up and see all the connections. It's like, ah, oh, look at that. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. It's a different perspective than going ah. No, it really is. I started at the very bottom. There was good. There was evil. It's like, son of a bitch. I'm working for the evil guys. I got out. Yeah. I told them, I'm out. Conscientious objector. They weren't happy. I was yeah. the best they had. I was standards and avals. I wrote the, the things. I helped write the drills, like for the, the drill they had for 9-11. I would help make those. I knew when they did 9-11, that's bullshit. Because none of the fucking protocols for uh, uh, intercepting and interdicting the aircraft were followed that day. 12 minutes or less. If it's unknown and it's hijacked, oh, 12 minutes are left. We got fighters on. 
and they flew around for an hour, hour and a half. Kiss my ass, not my watch, bro. That's yeah. bullshit. Dick Cheney called the sand down. I'm telling the world, Dick Cheney did. It. Well, yeah, he, he's he's he got called out by the Interior Minister, I think, because he heard it. Oh, shit. It's in it's in one of the Senate subcommittee things. Well, yeah, I think I remember a story saying uh, where they were asking Dick Cheney is the operation still on or something like that, and he responded, "Yeah, like, that's it. Yeah. Of course, it's still fucking." Have right. you heard anything <laughs> to the contrary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's exactly what he said. And so the guy just shut up and said, "Okay, <laughs> no fuck, you know, he's, he's the vice president." Involved in it, yeah. Yeah. So, and of course, nobody who is was on active duty that day, had a clue what the hell was really going on. Everything's compartmentalized. I need to know. That's all they ever tell you. They beat it in the air. All right? Yeah, I you mean, know. I know. Yeah, yeah. I spent a little time uh, just as you as a, as a government contractor. I wasn't, you know, directly working for the government, but, uh, well, okay, I was, you know, working for the government, but I wasn't you know, in the government as a government employee or whatever, I guess. Yeah, I understand. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, I understand how those things work. And yeah, that's my, one of my buddies had a conversation with somebody from that was working in the government recently. And he, you know, we, he started getting into the whole thing with like, you know, did we really land on the moon? You know, like, uh, you know, just talking to him about all this stuff and, and you know the guy the government guy was like well if it happened you know if it didn't happen the way they said it was i would know about it because i work for the government and it's just like no yeah. you would because there are guys at nasa ne you only never need to know your one on. little thing yeah <laughs> you know, they never know it's right. ridiculous mm. yeah. yeah you work on your one little project and that's all you're supposed to know you're not supposed to ask other people about their projects or anything like that. no you just uh it is. It's highly segmented and compartmentalized. So yeah, it's easy to do it when you do that. The yep. gatekeepers are everywhere, Greg. You know that. Yep. You no, know, we're 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 lone soldiers, you know, badly. And the the battle really is for the other things. This is a spiritual battle that we are in. The time frame that we are in. Yeah. Oh, there's never been a more dangerous time to be alive. Or a more exciting time to be alive. Depends yeah, on your perspective. I absolutely agree with that. I, I really Me, I'm excited. I've yeah. been waiting a long time to see what's taking place there. And for the most part, you guys have all avoided me. You know, you've avoided me because I think you know what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Some have already heard it. They don't like it. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, that's just... You can't uh, help it. Yeah, I really do think that this is uh, it is coming down to kind of a an evolution. Like we're either gonna move into the next kind of the next phase of human evolution, or um, just kind of move into this merging of technology and humanity. I think is where you know transhumanism yeah oh yeah is, is where the they them those uh all of powers that, ties that should in. not be are trying to push things in that direction all of that ties in when when yeah. you start looking at some of the music that i'll post songs it'll explain that eddie you know you you go and watch the official video uh mr roboto by six okay oh yeah in fact i gotta i gotta put that in that group tonight yeah you go watch the official videos. The official videos of a lot of these guys, they reveal some wild stuff about what they're really talking about. And a lot of times we get into the music, we don't even know. We mumble the words like we know the words. We don't know the words. But shit, I've been showing people some, you look at the Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden. Yeah. Official video with lyrics. Holy shit. I've been singing lines and I was dancing that. Really? Holy shit. It'll get you woke up a little bit. Oh, and there's, I've got hundreds of them. I've yeah. Got, you need to look at that, that one I invited you today. 
but the way to use yeah. that that thing is to go to the go to the announcements, look at the announcements first, and then go all the way to, to the scroll at the bottom and work your way up. And I yeah. haven't completed writing about all of them. I've got so many, it's unreal. <laughs> well, it's yeah, that kind of goes back into fun. the. Uh, you, you think it's kind of a collective consciousness thing that these lyrics kind of kind of come up in, in certain people it's kind of a collective consciousness type thing or is this uh you know part of the elites kind of uh i have to show you what we're gonna do before we do it kind of thing there the, you go that's that is definitely part of it because that seems to me to be obvious it, it has to be part of the deal because they do it just too often and i'm not talking about just the music i've seen it over and over in our entertainment our movies our series I mean, the X-Files is a freaking documentary, okay? <laughs> if you take out the aliens and you throw in fallen angels, demons, now you got something, okay? And hmm. some of you might freak out about that, but now you got something. I never even watched that until I retired and came came down here. Yeah. When I watched that, I said, son of a bitch. <laughs> it's like the movie They Live, another documentary, okay? Oh, yeah, man. That's... Uh... That's, we have to face the reality. Really have to These entities out. exist. They have always existed. They've always been here. They've been running the show forever. <laughs> That's why it's so messed up. It's not civilized at all. Yeah, that kind of goes back to like the Gnostics talked about the the Gnostic Christians talked about some something called the Archons or something like that. Uh, yeah. Just another name for the fallen angels. Check out two Pink Floyd songs. I, I, not Pink Floyd. They're David Gilmore. Okay? David Gilmore, Rattle That Lock. And after you watch the official video of that one and check out the lyrics, then go watch um, his, I mean, go, yeah, go watch the video, listen to the song, No Way Out of Here. Yeah. Oh, shit. Those two keys right there, they opened up all of Pink Floyd's music to me. And all of their music has almost got a similar theme all the way through, including yeah. the wall, baby. including the wall. The wall, you know what the wall is? That impenetrable barrier up there. The wall. Hmm. Oh, my God. When you understand the, the lyrics of that song, oh, my Hmm. It's wild. These guys know some shit. You look at Dark Side of the Moon, time, money. That came out when I was 14. That taught me a lot about how to live. Time and money. Yeah. And then it's just uh, so much of it, so much of the music also has a Bible message. That's what really freaking me out. I got songs from Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy has got a higher sense of morality than most of these so-called Christians out there. Listen to his song, Dreamers. You know? Dreamers. Dreamers by Ozzy. He's, you know, for a Satanist, they, they reveal a lot of stuff. You know, that's really true. A lot of them talk about the key is love. The key is giving. Even the most satanic fans are doing it and have done it for many years. Why? Why are they so focused on Jesus and God and Satan? Why? <laughs> well, they wow. actually well, they actually understand uh, the natural order and how it's structured, and so largely uh, they do. They they exist now in spiritual darkness, mental darkness, so they can't understand it like maybe we can, but they still try and they still use it. Well, yeah, they use it because they have to, they believe that uh, they have to show you everything that they're going to do. And if you don't fight against it, then you're complying with it. So that frees them of their karmic, uh, their karmic debt or, right. their, you know, uh, what's going to come back to them. Everybody will mm. reap what they sow, bro. They will reap what they sow. You sow goodness, kindness, love. That's what you're going to reap. You're full of hate and anger. That's what you get. You know? It's all right here. We live right here. Yeah. Can, you know, yeah, I, I, I think we're all of part, of, uh, part of the creator. Yeah. I just thought of something. I guess I might as well address it now while I'm thinking about it. This right. mark of the beast. Yeah. 
You want to talk about the mark of the beast? Yeah, I'd love to hear. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that? What do you think? How? how uh, I mean, what the I mass, think the masks are kind of like a transition into that. I oh, think. everybody's freaking out! Oh, they got to chip me! Oh, I got to chip me! That ain't the mark, bro. God don't need a chip. Okay, the mark is very simple. The scriptures in Revelations in chapter thirteen it says you get a mark either on your right hand or on your forehead, right? Right? Uh, okay. yeah, I guess. Uh, I'm not that. Well, uh, I can I'm bring that, the scripture up and show it to you. I'm not it's that Revelation familiar 13. with the, the You scripture. get marked in the right hand or in the forehead. Okay. All right. Now the mark, your hands signify action, what you do. Okay. Mark on your forehead signifies how you think. It's going to be largely reflected in how you speak and in what you do. That simply is the mark. I can look at a person these days and I can tell very quick if they're marked or not. But most people all work, you know, they're freaking out. It's a great, um, I think it's a joke by Satan. He's got everybody in the world freaking out about this technology and this, that, and other thing. It's another diversionary tactic. It's a waste of time to think about. The mark is just too simple. It's how you speak, act, and behave. That's it. It reveals everything about a person, doesn't it? Well, I think, yeah, I think there's a, there's, there's a good point there because I think it, there are people that just are – the, you can confront with the the reality of the situation, but they have to, they don't want to know it. They just don't want to know it because it's too, they have their comfort, they have their comforts in the system. And to understand, you know, the truth would put them outside of that comfort. Oh, would, the, with, with the truth comes responsibility to do something about it. Yeah, people don't want to know the truth. Believe me, I've been doing this long enough to know people don't want to know. I've seen them. They just get angry and they walk away. Right. Oh, yeah. They don't right. want to hear what I tell them. But it's the truth. Sorry. Right. I do my due diligence. I do my research, bro. Or I open my mouth. That's a sigma. Okay. Yeah, Paul, Paul, you're in the dark there. Do you got any place where uh, you got any, any yeah. light? Or, uh... It's really getting dark there now, huh? <laughs> yeah, let's see if we can get some there. We got, uh... oh, look at this place, huh? Oh, wow. Wow, that is beautiful. Yeah, Acapulco nighttime is just... Uh... Uh, this is right down at the marina, just downtown. Just amazing, yeah. That's downtown straight over there. Right yeah, over man. There. That's the downtown. There's uh, the beach over there. To the right side, all the oh, towers right. and everything. The, I guess Golden Zone or whatever the Costera they call it. Yeah, yeah. the place that is beautiful at night, man. Yeah, I'm gonna get me a table here shortly and set up a little place to do kind of studio, uh, you know, studio or whatever. Yeah, mm. I, I've got to start doing videos myself. Yeah, I mean, it's a uh, it's the media that you know most people are able to digest now i mean a whole lot of people uh mm -hmm. don't seem to have any time to read <laughs> most yeah. people are trying to just make it right now i mean you know shutting down the economy for like two months and and some places in the country are still shut down and you know you know most people are just trying to make Darwin. it Stop. day by day how about a little light that better yeah, yeah, there we go. I can see you now. <laughs> All right, we get a little light going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It gets nice there, dark. There we go. How's that? Yeah, there we go. See my outfit? Yeah. <laughs> All my shit? Oh, I yeah. Become the white, wiz white wizard and the white, white witch. <laughs> <laughs> I bought all this shit out in Bonville when we were staying out there for a month. Oh, yeah? I was keep, the only gringo out there keeping the economy going. <laughs> oh, okay. About 20,000 pesos worth of freaking. Oh, wow. They, they came every time and said, oh, he's here. Let's go get him, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh yeah, the people uh, that go and sell the the old ladies ne- selling ne- out on necklaces the necklaces yeah. and stuff on the beach. Oh man, they uh, had the, they loved you. <laughs> oh yeah, and they they raked me over the coals too. I found this shit all over here for way to hell last. <laughs> I didn't yep. care, man. That they, they needed some money. They're, I mean, they they're starving. There's nobody on the beach but me and Erwin. Oh wow, yeah. For a couple of weeks, now wow. it should be plenty out there, but yeah. That's what's really, you know, pissing me off. You know, they they really have put a lot of hurting on a lot of people, and not just in this country, throughout the world. Yeah. And that's the thing is, you think about this. Trump could close down the world. The ruler of the world closed down the world. Okay. Oh yeah, I mean, the all, one Jesus all president, us of, the all presidents are are, are puppets, man. They're just. Well, of course they are. Aren't you guys familiar with the three temptations of Jesus? One of them was he took, Satan took them to the top of the mount, showed them all the kingdoms of the world and said, if you do one act of worship to me, I'll give them all to you. Shows what his mind thought is he wants to be God. All right. But Jesus didn't call them out and say, they're not yours. He just told them, go away. Go away, Satan. Okay. He is the real ruler of the world. Three other times he mentioned, he said, the ruler of this world is coming. He has no hold on me. He said things like that. Who's this ruler of the world? Obviously it is the devil. That's why he came. He said, I came, I came, became manifest to break up the works of the devil. We're there, bro. Yeah, there. well, well, I kind of, you know. Mm. Let me, let, let's go into it, okay? I've already right. opened a can of words. Let's do it. Right, Matthew let's 24, go. 14. Right. Matthew 24 and 25. These two chapters are about the, the sign of the last days. Jesus lists them all out. Earthquakes, wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, famines. He said all sorts of stuff. False Christ, prophets, everything. Then he, in, in verse 14, he says, and then this good news of the kingdom shall be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Well, what has just happened is for the last five months, the good news of the kingdom has stopped being preached for the first time. Yeah, all the churches, all the churches have been are shut closed, down. baby. Yeah. This is an attack from the governments. This is the fulfillment of Revelation 17 and 18 against Babylon, the great harlot. Three people or persons really, or groups are mentioned in this this prophecy. Two are clearly named. One, it says the kings of the earth, the governments. The other one, it calls them the merchants, the traveling merchants. I call them today the international bankers, okay? The money power. Those two are clearly mentioned in, in 17, uh, actually in 18. But Babylon the Great is a mystery. Nobody really knew what she is. Well, we know what she is. She's religion. You have your kings, you have your moneyed interests, you have your religion. Those three institutions have ruled every civilization since the beginning of time. Okay, they always work together, hand in hand. Right now, the governments, because God has chosen to judge them, I mean, the religions, all of them are false, right? He is using the governments. You look at the last uh, two verses in Revelation 17, and he says, he puts it into the hearts of the governments to carry out his one thought, to destroy Babylon, the great heart. They burn her completely with fire. He is now shut down. This had a fulfillment in the first century, right? When Jesus first gave this, this was to be fulfilled against Jerusalem because they claimed to be God's people. And yet they killed his son. That covenant with his, the nation of Israel was done the day they nailed him to the torture stake. Okay? That covenant was done. They were no longer his chosen people. Right? So now... In the year 66, the Romans come on over to Jerusalem. Check it out in the history. They surround Jerusalem. They get ready, apparently, to destroy them. And then historian, historians mostly record that they left. The Romans just up and left. 
but they came back in, in the year 70 and finished the job. This is what I believe has just happened. The governments have come, surrounded Jerusalem, so to speak, all the world's religions claiming to serve God, okay? Shut them down, but now they're backing up. They're going to open back up. What is key here is what Jesus next says in 15 through 19. He says, when you see this happen, he says, when you see the disgusting place standing in a place it ought not to, according to the prophet Daniel, and then he says, let the reader use discernment. He says, then flee to the mountains, because you know that her destruction is at end. <clears throat> so the disgusting thing that Daniel mentioned would have been the Roman army pagan Roman army surrounding God's chosen city, Jerusalem, okay, standing where it ought not. But then it left and gave the Christians who had been trapped inside their time to get out and flee to the mountains. That's where we are at right now. We have to get out of false religion completely, get away from any attachment to any of this. Like Jesus said, you want to be my follower, the world will hate you. You must be no part of the world, right? People don't take that shit serious. I do. I've been no part of the world for a long time. I keep that way. And it fits perfectly with my Sigma personality anyways. Now, I have to speak. I know too much. I know what's really going on. That's what's really going on. We got maybe three years, I think, to get ourselves in order. I look at this as also... God sending every human to his bedroom to think about what they've done, what kind of person they have become. The line is going to be drawn clearly between good and evil over the next few years. You That's think, my take on it. Uh, and I got lots of scriptures to back what I just said up, a lot more. That's it. Think, That's a Reader's Digest version. I like it. I like it. Do you, think, do you think that this is uh, something kind of inherent in humanity that maybe humanity kind of just uh, goes through these cycles of, uh, of growth and then destruction of their civilizations and things as soon as, you know, people start to wander away from are you, the natural law? And, are you talking about the fourth turning? Have you ever word? read that stuff? Uh, no. I the fourth turning? Google that. Fourth turning. It's got some interest and stuff, and it explains what you're talking about. There is some kind of historical basis for that. Done it about the U.S. and showed how every like 70 to 80 years, a major war and a turning over. You know, you had the the Revolutionary War. Yeah. And then about 80 years later, you got the Civil War, and then 80 years later, you got World War II, and now we are about 80, 75, 80 years from there. So yeah, there so seems it's a time. It's a time of uh, upheaval during those uh, cycles of every fourth uh, generation, and they've got a cycle that, that they've done some analysis on. It's very interesting reading. Just called Fourth Turning. Yeah. No, I'll have to read that. I, I've heard of it. And I've heard it mentioned, but I've never actually picked it up yet. Well, see, this is a thing, Greg. When I retired down here ten years ago, all I had was a computer and time. Okay. And you know what I've done. <laughs> oh, I dug, 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 dug. You went down some deep rabbit holes, huh? Well, I, I, I confirmed a lot of shit that I had suspected is basically it. Yeah. I could never debunk anything. It's like, wow, there's no conspiracy theories. They're all facts based on at <laughs> least, at least, you know, some pretty, circum pretty uh, 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 big amount of circumstantial evidence at the very least. Yeah. Now, the yeah, stories yeah. just never add up. I'll, I'll give you another example. Uh, you know, I'm from Cambridge, Mass. Okay. So the Boston bombing had a lot of interest for me. Oh, yeah. Those two guys were living two blocks from my mom's house. Hmm. I was really interested. I'm up late watching one night in Mazatlan. It's only 11 o'clock in Mazatlan, but it was like 1 o'clock in, in Boston. Mm -hmm. This was the night that they had the big shootout with the two brothers. And they say the older brother got run over by the little brother. That's bullshit. I watched live on CNN at night 
them perp walk naked, naked as a jaybird with his hands cuffed behind his back, walking the older brother down the street and putting him in the back of the cop car. And the next morning, that motherfucker, did you ever see the pictures of his body? Oh my God, they beat the living fuck out of them and, and say that, that his, his brother, kid brother ran him over. I knew that's bullshit too. Hmm. And that was another one. Boston, um, that Boston bombing was, that was a drill going on that they made go live. Same thing that they did on 9-11 and they did it 7-7 in Great Britain. They always seem to have a drill and it goes live. So it confuses everybody, even those involved in the drill. It's perfect. They're brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Well, the same thing happened with the coronavirus here, where they had the event 201 that that occurred, you know, months prior to. Uh, All this shit's planned out ahead for years. The pre- the pandemic, yeah. Uh, FDR said there ain't nothing happens by coincidence. The government, that's all planned, baby. <laughs> yeah. Years in advance. Generations, in some cases. Yeah. This, this is a tyrannical two-step of. Oh my God, it's it's a spiritual battle, bro. It's beyond us to handle. This is why all this demonstration, all this fighting against the system, you're wasting your time. It's not our job to change it. Our job is only to share what we learn with others and help them, that's it. Move towards a more loving, kind person. It's the best advice I can give you right now. Yeah, I do agree that it does come within you that you have to be the change that you want to demonstrate to the rest of the world. Nobody can change the world. We can change ourselves and that's it. And you ought to be happy with that if you can achieve it. Well, I mean, the change, the outward change comes from your inward change. And, and, you know, like it's, it's like a ripple in a pool, you know. As uh, so, uh, so how I can envision it is that sure. w- once once you change your own and your own world and that affects the outside world and all the it becomes all, contagious all, all those around you yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah. I mean I, I was listening to a podcast earlier today it was with uh, the urban farmer Curtis Stone and and Owen Benjamin and they were having a chat and you know that's one thing they actually discussed there's a lot. You know, they were discussing a lot of these things that we're talking about. And, you know, what what he was basically saying was, you know, I, you know, Curtis Stone is a, a farmer that, up there in Canada. And what he does is he's he goes out and he'll till up people's uh, yards and help them get started with gardens. He just donates some, some of his time in his local community for that. And, you know, what you know, by doing that, you know, people got his back. You know, if anything comes from the outside and they want to mess with Curtis. I mean, they got a they got a whole neighborhood of people to mess with because he supports himself and the the, the broader community. And so, you know, he's he's gone down the that journey of figuring out, you know, who he is and how, you know, how to spread his his gifts really while he's uh while he's here and he's just like Johnny Appleseed. Yeah. Good yeah. Man. yeah Good man. So so I mean that's really what it comes down to. I mean it, you, you know all these rabbit holes and everything they're they're fun they're fun to go down but at a certain point you have to take action and oh that's, yeah that's really what i'm all about is is moving to that step of trying to give people the tools on taking action and and moving in in a, in a better direction and and it's just uh you know it it does come from that self-work just like you're talking about paul it's a, and that's a big and that's part what i'm it. trying to do is is all i'm trying to do now is i'm mm. trying to get everybody informed you know informed consent is a big thing isn't it and most people just don't even have a clue about what the real truth is you know they're all running around their lost wondering what the hell is really going on and they can't make real good decisions for their lives because they don't know what's really going on they don't know the stakes that are involved here this is life and death for all of us all eight billion of us we're being under inspection right now. I'm telling you, we've been sent to our rooms to think. We better do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the a lot of people that are refusing to to look at what's really going on are going to have a really hard time. I think you know, um, what what's going to happen when you're going to have to eat, you know, whatever 
or, or, or you lose your job, you're going to have to go on some kind of universal basic income. Well, what, what strings uh, are going to be attached to that? You know, what, what strings are going to be attached to this government money that's coming in? Oh yeah. Well, um, see, that's why they want to chip you. It's just to control you there, but that's not the mark. Okay. Stop with all that bullshit. The mark is much simpler. There's another one uh, that's over in Ezekiel. One of, the, of his prophecies is a, uh, marking work that a secretary with an inkhorn goes out marking people and, it, and it's a prophecy about Jesus because Jesus is the judge. So he's out marking people for salvation. See the other mark, the mark of the beast, you're dying if you're wearing that one. Okay, so you better strip it the hell off. All right. But, um, you know, there's, there is both marking being done. Well, and Ezekiel, uh, he gets pretty, he gets pretty brutal about it. He says when the inkhorn secretary is done going marking everybody, eight angels come with weapons for smashing. Okay, it ain't gonna be purdy, bro. No, God well, never does anything without first warning. That's what he says in the Bible. I never do anything without first telling my people and warning my prophets and whatever. The warning's being given. It's been given for many years, and we've ignored it. Well, I'm almost, I, I'm almost wondering with the way things are rolling out here is, is that uh, tech, uh, you know, kind of being overwhelmed uh, or part of the human consciousness gets taken and merges with uh, AI or something, yeah. and then in in that way, if you if you decide to go down that path, you can never spiritually grow. And you're always going to be caught. You're always going to, you're going to be uh, forever contained in this realm. Yeah. I, I, no, I, I no, you'll end up like dead. That. That's all, you know, ashes to ashes, <laughs> dust to dust. They say that at all funerals for a reason, right? That's all we do. We go, we die. That's yeah. it. Yeah. God ain't torturing nobody in no fiery place. Cause you screwed up for a hundred years. That just is not justice. Okay. That's another lie. There ain't no fucking burning hell. People die. You go to the grave. You look at their Hebrew word Sheol, the Greek word Hades. They are the same word as the English hell. Okay? The common grave of mankind is what the ancient Hebrews view that as. Where you go lie? You wait. You sleep. Like Jesus said. He said Lazarus has gone to sleep. When he knew damn well Lazarus had died. But then he went over there and he raised them up. So sleep is like, death is like sleep. That's it. And that's the purpose of the resurrection. What's to resurrect if there's no dead down there? Everybody seems to think it happens immediately. They go right to heaven. Yeah. No, 144,000 are going to heaven. That's it. Everybody else, paradise right here. This is where we were made to live. If that doesn't happen, then God was a failure. Because that was his original intent and in making this place and putting perfect humans here. He said, go forth and multiply and have in subjection all the animals and plants and everything. A paradise for all perfect humans. He will not be denied. He will have that for those who want. Okay, that is the truth. All that other crap, lie. The world full of lies. They don't call him the father of the lie for nothing. Well, yeah, it is a total lie when you're in a city and, and you, you don't really get to see the amazing, you know, capabilities that this planet has in generating life. I mean, you know, I it's been a few years that I've been doing some stuff with permaculture and just growing some of my own food and doing aquaponics. Well, you fire up an aquaponics system, and once you get the chemistries all uh, in balance, that thing like springs a cold ton of stuff into life. There's, there's like different kind of bugs that want to come in there. There's frogs that just show up out of nowhere that just come on. Uh, you yeah. know, you got the fish that are that are living in there. You get like this just amazing ecology uh, and biology that just spring out of nowhere, and like. Like we didn't see as many frogs until, yeah, it's like a, yeah, it all works in uh, together with itself to generate more and more life. It's just, uh, you know, just seeing stuff like that. It's just like, um, it, it is an amazing capability that this place has for life generation. 
and oh, yeah. and uh, you ever been down the genome project hole? Uh, no, no, I haven't uh, gone down. I you know what gone they, totally down that one. You know what they concluded? Oh, what's that? This is over twenty years ago. I'm pretty sure. They uh -huh. they said that all humans in the world are related. Yeah. We all come from one human pair. Yeah. And they even said how long ago. They've been able to figure out from our DNA and a thing called telomeres that are um, telomeres in our, our DNA, they shorten every yeah. year. They feel this is what's causing our aging mm -hmm. because yep. the telomeres keep getting shorter. I'm familiar with well, that. Well, they, yeah. they've been able to figure out how many generations back of humans. They said, not Christians, science said one human pair is the, the, the padres, the, the parents of everybody. 6,000 years ago, they lived. Really? No shit. <laughs> that pretty well sums it up nicely. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's <laughs> lots of evidence for some kind of crazy cat cataclysm or something that had hit the planet and you know possibly caused a, an entire Get race out of here that civilization crap. i mean the, there, the there's, a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of evidence true. of that the account in genesis is true science even supports it. i've seen scientists right they say that the the account in genesis one of how god makes the world starting with first let there be light said so this is the way you could describe it to a pastoral people, a simple people. He said, this is how it would have happened. It would have happened exactly in this order. Okay, it's, they back it up. Every science I've ever, true science, they back the Bible up. Nobody can disprove the Bible. It's undisprovable because it's all true. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, I think there there is some there is some kind of like metaphorical stuff in there. I mean, oh, it's especially full of symbolism, especially See, what, with the, Greg, the under, story of Adam and Eve. I, I really do think that there, understand understand who the Bible was written for, and this will help clarify. Okay, the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament, that's written for the Jews, the nation of Israel, nobody else. The rest of us, we can benefit by understanding what happened there. And the same thing with the New Testament. That's written for the 144,000 who are going ahead. The rest who have a hope of living forever in paradise and perfection, it's not written for them. Though they benefit from the guidance and counsel and also from Jesus' sacrifice. The counsel, first and foremost, is to Jesus' brothers, the sons of God. The ones that he chooses to be rulers with his son in heaven. Okay. You go into deeply in Revelation about this, and it tells exactly what their purpose is. They're going to be used to help raise the rest of humanity to perfection. They're going to teach them to live. Okay, that's the whole thousand-year rule of Christ. Because at the end of that thousand-year rule, it says that Jesus and these 144,000 throw their, their crowns of being kings and priests for the thousand year rule, they throw it at the feet of Jehovah. He is the king. He is the true God. He's the father of Jesus. Uh, even Jesus admits that. Give the rulership back to him. And it makes sense because at that time, people will have been raised to perfection. God does not deal with imperfect people directly. When we're perfect, we can be his friend. We can have a relationship directly with him. Well, I think we all can. And I think that, you know, uh, I've done, you know, the experience with Bufo Alvarius, that uh, 5 MEO DMT, where, you know, you dissolve your human, uh, I guess you could say your, your uh -huh. ego. And then you, I mean, for me, it was almost like a rock, taking a rocket ship to go meet God and it was like um, you didn't meet God you met um, an angel you met a fallen angel just like uh, I, I mean, when I was, did the DMT trip it was, it was, it was I like, turned to him and I told him I said well, you're here, one of them 
<laughs> well, well, here's the here's the kind of they experience you, that it bro. was. Was like they can't uh, fool me. <laughs> it was like a it was like a very it was like receiving like total warmth and comfort. Oh yeah, this is what they do in a lot of cases. I've read a lot of people. I've talked. I'm in a lot of groups that we talk about that about the DMT trips and shit like that. Oh yeah, a lot of them say it, but then a lot of them tell you too. Then they start whispering to you to kill yourself. Okay. I didn't get any of that. <laughs> no, most most don't. It depends. Okay. How many times have you done it? You do it just the once? Yeah, I only did it one time. Yeah. Keep the hell away from it. The yeah. more you open it up to them, the more they come for you. All right. I think yeah. I told you after all my years of of understanding and exploring, I did it more out of curiosity, but it blew my freaking mind. <laughs> Yeah, it blew my mind. I mean, I told him I, I didn't I didn't ask him. I told him I said, you're one of them, aren't you? And he said, yeah, I've met three others since and I've done the same thing to them since then. I had a guy show up out in Bonfield and yeah. he was the only other guy. He said it was a Spanish guy, a Mexican guy. And after a day of hanging around him, I just turned to him and I said, are you master of your soul? Are you master of your body? And he said, Nope. <laughs> and it's like, really? <laughs> and he's not the only. I've had three of them. And they seem to have to tell me the truth. I don't know why, but it's kind of weird. I ask them, are you master of your soul? And they tell me no. One of them came, came to our door here and told us before we even talked, they're not even human. They're not even human. And she was pretty freaking weird, man. <laughs> Hmm. Darwin's seen all of this too. He said it's it's been weird around here hmm. since that DMT trip. But my situation was way different, having almost four decades behind studying who they are, what they are, and they've been tormenting me for many many years, unseen. Hmm. It was nice to actually face one, hmm. just like in the song Cashmere. He was one of the elders of the gentle race. He was very pleasing to talk with. Hmm. Another thing I told him, and, and witnesses did hear me this part. I told him, I'm surrounded by enemies, aren't I? And he said, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I had help there that night, too, that saved me. Oh, yeah, you'll see it on the music group. I've got to get into that. I reveal a lot about my DMT trip in that music group. Hmm. Well, I will. I have not I've got the songs up. They described my DMT trip to the freaking ladder, man. How did they do that? These songs were written many years ago, many, many years ago. And yet it described it to the T. I'm freaking out like you wouldn't believe. Go look at Southern <laughs> Cross. It says Southern Cross by Crosby, Stills and Nash. Mm -hmm. I was getting that song all the time. All it talks is about is falling and in spirits talking to you and larger voices calling. It's like, where did this song come from? <laughs> <laughs> I've got hundreds. They're sending them to me now, Greg, since I started that group. I didn't know why I started. I started it right after the DMT trip, didn't know what I was going to get, and I've been getting flooded. Flooded. And Erwin has seen it. We are getting yeah. songs that are telling us about their life stories. I made the group and I told them, you read the first thing. I want this for real angels. You know what the time period we're in. You know your time's run out. You're going into the abyss for a thousand years. Do so you want to tell your story or not? And they've been doing it in song. So, uh, so yeah, you guys have a little... I can't guess... even believe I told all you guys that. <laughs> <laughs> the funny farm will be coming for me soon. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, but uh, yeah. So you guys have a little community. You you got we're, a little, we're working got a, based got a, on got a little group going on down there. Yes, a little. It's it's. Eh. Most of them don't want to hear the message, bro. Yeah. yeah. And the and the sad thing is, I uh, for the cannabis side, I work with even the devil. I don't care. That's <laughs> this system of things. I mean, it's all devil controlled, anyways. Hmm. 
So what the hell? I don't care. I'll work with, with, with them on, on that side. And in the meantime, I'll be telling them, you know, you probably ought to get off that crummy road you're on and move over to this road. <laughs> and if they want to, that's fine. If they don't want to listen, I don't care. Yeah, it don't matter. Yeah. It just don't matter to me. Can I give them a choice? Oh, you're going to have to see. You're going to have to look at Green Grass and High Tides and look at that song on, on my page that I sent you. That's the first one I really woke up to, that they were sending me the shit. Green Grass and High Tides by the Outlaws. Yeah. I look mean, at them lyrics, and I can explain them lyrics. The rainbow, the stars, all the crap. That. And then I got another song shortly after that. Helped me understand that, oh, they were definitely sending them. Go look at Home by the Sea by Genesis. Home by the Sea 1 and 2 by Genesis. Genesis has got so much music from about this subject that it's ridiculous. So does Fleetwood Mac. So does Pink Floyd. So does Styx. So does Metallica. Oh, my God. I could go on and on. Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Neil Young. So many of them. Th um, well, yeah, I mean, who, there's a the who, the guess who. There's a reason why you know some of those songs really resonate with people is because they're, the lyrics really. Let me tell you about the a, most on a subconscious level. Yeah. Let good. me tell you about the most popular song in history, the most played song ever. Do you know what it is? No. What is it? Stairway to Heaven. Oh, okay. You know what that song is about? No, not entirely. Yeah, we, we were having a Well, I didn't until just recently. Yeah. I knew it was weird. It's actually about that 144,000. That lady that he talks about, you look at those lyrics. It is describing the lady. The bride yeah. of Christ is what is referred to. And the apostle John referred to that woman as lady several times in his letters that's what they're talking about and well i know they were big fans of the lord of the rings and jr tolkien and ben tolkien. oh yeah tolkien was a christian oh yeah and so he put a lot of the uh yeah, there's a lot of symbology in there believe me the return of the ring in in yeah the book, return yeah. of the gang all that yeah absolutely absolutely but but you look at that song now with new eyes. You look at that and look at the lyrics of Stairway to Heaven. That thing is wow. I'll write about it here soon. And I'll just yeah, you should again. you should do a little essay or a blog or something. No, I'm like gonna that. have to do it. Well that's what that that, that group is for. I just okay. haven't done it on all the songs yet. Um I've been putting the songs over there and saying, Yeah, I'll get back over there to write about it. That was totally, you know how that goes. <laughs> that was totally interesting when you were yeah. you know just kind of describing that to me. Uh, oh, you got to read the lyrics. It really is impressive, you know. And I will. I'll write about it. And pretty wild. And there's a lot of them. Blinded yeah. by the light by Manford Man. That's about my DMT trip. Twilight Zone. Another one. I've definitely entered the Twilight Zone, brother. There's little doubt. I am living large with the interdimensional, interdimensional beings. The truth is, the thing is, the, the truth is stranger than fiction. Uh, oh, it is. I, and, I've come to realize. Uh, and the thing is, they have no power over me anymore. After that trip, that's they realized the world changed that day, bro. The world changed. They knew that there was someone had uh, arrived, someone different. You know what the last thing, the last, very last thing of that DMT trip? When when I came out of it, this I because I took two hits. I come out of it, and there's this cute little girl standing right in front of me. I get up, say hi or something, walk around her, and there's this guy runs out of the 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 you know the up at Michael's house where he's got that bar, that pit in the by the pool. Yeah. This guy comes out running. I don't know who it is to this day, but he runs across in front of the pool screaming, a legend has been born. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> but you know, bro, he was right. He was right. Hmm. And my Sigma side, 
just keeps it hidden. How do you come out and, and tell people this? But I got you. This is it. This is it, bro. I got it. I got to tell everything. And yeah. I don't care how I look. Yeah. It don't matter. But y'all better pay attention. Y'all better pay attention. When I tell you shit, y'all better pay attention. Yeah. The, you know, the podcast I was listening to earlier today, a, you know, Urban or uh, Curtis Stone was talking about how he's friends with Cal Washington. And he's doing a lot of a lot of things to give people their power back in the legal system, like uh, notices of liability yeah. uh, on companies to try to put the liability on them. And actually, the CEOs of the companies directly putting them personally liable for damages and things like that. And so, oh, yeah. You can sue um, anybody, including the government. Yeah. And so, okay, and they're so, a corporation. They're a corporation. Any corporation you can sue. Okay, you got to know the law. You got to know the international law, UCC. That's where you sue them. Yeah. And when you walk into any one of these admiralty courts, it's all about business. Yeah, exactly. And, and what you contracts. need to do, what you do is you go and you tell them, show me the contract that you have authority over me to drag my ass in here and, and do this to me. Show me to produce me the contract. Yeah. That's you the can, first thing I'm going to ask. You do conditional acceptance where you That's say, it. I will gladly do yeah, well, what you're when they saying, ask you, but on condition. When they ask you, you are you Greg, blah, blah, doubt, you do not answer. Right. Or you say, you tell them, no, I'm that's, the beneficiary or something. Uh, there you go. I'm the beneficiary. Okay. Yeah, I'm the yeah. living, true person. I'm the beneficiary. I want to see the contract that you have with me that I signed that gave you authority to drag me in here and try to extort money from me. That's what I'm gonna. Yeah, that's that's something that you All can right. do. You can. They take don't want your, me in court. They don't want me in no court. If they're gonna come, from, they're coming in with a black bag for me. <laughs> but they're coming with a black bag. Well, from what I've been learning, that uh, yeah, from uh, this book, the UCC connection, how to free yourself from legal tyranny. That's one step you can do is to take your birth certificate, uh, a um, you know, a certified copy into the courtroom or whatever, and you just. You slide that down the bar or whatever and submit it as evidence. And uh, if they, they make you want to jump through all sorts of freaking shit, <laughs> I just walk yeah. away. If you well, guys yeah, are that's smart, well, walk that's what the you're supposed fuck to do. Away you're from supposed them to, and leave them alone. <laughs> you're supposed to say, you know, I submit this into the uh, evidence of the court, let it be put on the public record uh, that I am the beneficiary uh, and yeah. that uh, this does not deal with me. These matters don't deal with me. And, and then you just like walk out of the courtroom after, you know, uh, after that, but if they, if they grab you and they try to keep you in, in and they try to keep calling your name, you just say, I'm the beneficiary, you know, I'm not that person or whatever. So. Uh, well, if they grab me, uh, I'm going to own them. Okay? <laughs> if anybody touches me, I'm going to own them. I'll go after their <laughs> fucking account. I'll go and sue their corporate person. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I mean there there, there are uh, tools out there, but uh, yeah, part of that story with Cal Washington was that you know he said that he took a trip to London and then he ended up somehow just he didn't mean to go there, but he ended up in front of Buckingham Palace, and you know he said that the energy coming off of that place was just like yeah really oh. nasty, really nasty energy like evil There's energy. There's a place here in town just like that. I hate yeah. being over there. Yeah. But anyway. There, he, there is a vortex of evil here, bro. But I Keep away from it. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, just speaking of the spirituality of things is that, you know, he was saying that he, he closed some kind of portal there or something like that. He said that he, you know, he he want, he he did, you know, so, so, some kind of a spiritual thing. But uh, he was saying that, you know, he's closing the portal there and kind of like uh, – uh, moving into something uh, more positive or whatever, but uh, but yeah, and I do think you know there are a lot a lot of this a lot of what we see in reality is it, there's a lot more going on than we we can see for sure. There's oh, a lot of stuff going on. I mean, you do know that our eyes see less than five percent of the light spectrum. Yeah, we don't know what the hell is out there. We got we got equipment we can use. I've seen some pretty weird stuff on some 
some of that shit in the past too. It's you know, yeah, infrared, yeah. infrared and shit. Yeah, my dad told me he seen weird shit when he was in the military. He was a airborne army trooper and landed in Incheon in Korea. Uh huh. He he seen some serious freaking battle. Hmm. But he also told me he seen one time back in the fifties. They they had a death ray or something laser ray back then because he watched them. They blasted a fucking cat to obliteration. He said. Oh well, yeah. I mean, Tesla's test- technology. Yeah, Tesla talks about, uh, you know, using something like a, describing something s- similar to like a particle accelerator. It's just frequencies, manipulating the frequencies. Everybody, everything has a frequency. The Earth is the Schumann resonance, 7.83 hertz. Same as a human, proves we we're made out of the Earth. And we resonate at that same frequency. Buildings do. This is what brings them down in earthquakes. The frequency is what's vibrating. It brings it down. Yeah. They can do it on anything. If we have, you know, you hit the right frequency, you can destroy anything. They know how to control the weather. They can make volcanoes, tsunamis, you name it. They got that technology and had it for many years. Remember, I was in electronic warfare. Yeah, yeah. With with, with HARP, definitely, I think that uh, the HARP that the angels play to uh manipulate the weather and things oh yeah for sure well you ever see that document the air force put out many years ago that they would own the weather by 2025 back in vietnam they were making it rain in the ho chi minh valley to keep the supplies from moving they've been able to do this like seeding clouds with particles and things like that. well they've gotten way better since then believe it yeah well it doesn't make all demon technology some of these all demon technology okay this is where we've had the explosion over 100 years yeah well yeah i've heard uh like a like a daemon on a computer this it's called a daemon but a daemon is like a uh something that that performs a program so yeah it could yeah, well daemon daemon is is um how they say it in like french or italian d-a-e-m-o-n daemon yeah, it sounds almost like diamond. Too, yeah. Yeah. And there's another one. Listen to "Shine on You Crazy Diamond" and just put in "demon." Yeah, the lyrics make more sense that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's very interesting once you get into the yeah the meanings of words and things like that. It's uh, a lot of a lot of things are are definitely out there in the words. Like you were talking oh, about earlier. Words and symbols. We're ruled by them, and so few know them. My vocabulary always tested in the top 1%. And that saddened me because there's so much more of the English language that I could actually learn. And to think that I'm in the top 1%, and I probably got thousands and thousands, I don't know. He said, uh, 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 indication of our education. Sir. Well, the English language mm-hmm. is such a it's such a hodgepodge of uh, different languages and stuff. It's, yeah. it, it's a very tricky language really, but it's like, uh, uh you know, well, they, that is, they use a lot of tricks in it. I mean, Oh yeah. Uh, where Agents. there's double, double meetings of a, lo- a lot of words and, Agents and one for the initiated and one for the uninitiated have yeah. different meanings. Black's law dictionary helps out, you know, there's free ones online. You can Google, or go ogle. I like that better. Go ogle. Because that's what they're doing. They're ogling all of us. Finet <laughs> has been active for a while. The only thing we ain't seen, we've seen the AI. We've seen the drones. The only thing we ain't seen, the Terminators. Well, those drones, man. It's, <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it's going to be... You know, I almost thought that I saw in a recent police chase video that uh, it almost looked like it was coming from a drone footage. Probably and, was. Yeah, I mean, these things can be sent out mm-hmm. and you can get, like, you know, high-res photos now. Another that grainy, oh, everything. Grainy video you watch the videos anything. of them actually actually killing people over over in the Middle East using the drones from, from Vegas. Yeah. You know? Yeah, right. Man. Yeah. This is what warfare is now. You ought to listen to David Gilmore's song, uh, In Any Tongue. That's really good. His wife wrote it, In Any Tongue by David Gilmore. 
right. Uh, it's about that drone using the drones to kill people over there. It's a sad song. Hmm. One of my favorites by them is on the turning away. That should be our theme. No more turning away from those weak and weary and helpless and hurt. No more. These fucking blue bloods, elites, these international bankers, they're all Satanists. They all have to be. They've all sold out and they're all stealing everything. And they've stolen it all. Yeah, I mean, they have everything. And really the only thing that gives them any pleasure, I think, is is to uh, just make everyone else miserable. Oh, they want to call and the control, purge is coming. The There's population. way too many of us. There's well, yeah, yeah, they don't you know want to. You know how many hundreds of CEOs have quit? Yeah. You yeah. know how many hundreds of CEOs have quit their jobs and they're running? Yeah. How many politicians have quit their job? They're fucking in a bunker somewhere. Yeah, I know. Yeah, a lot of these a lot of these folks have been preparing for this time because don't they, matter. they really know that. The, you, you know, they're in Revelation, in Revelations, it says they can hide anywhere they like. They're going to yeah. call for the mountains to fall over them and hide them. And God's going to root them out. And well, there's no, they escaping. Can hide. there's no escaping yeah. because uh, they're all, we're all connected. I believe we're all connected and and there's, there's an accounting of everything that you do in this reality. So, Oh yeah. I like that quote by Ayn Rand and Atlas Shrug. You know, you can ignore reality, but you can't ignore the consequences of that reality. Oh, wow. Yeah. I love that. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And everybody's ignoring it. Well, you won't ignore the consequences, bro. I guarantee you won't ignore them. You better, right. get, better get informed. You better get, you better get God's viewpoint on what's going on. And that's what I can provide. So many of you out there have come so far. You know so much. I've had some of the greatest conversations I've ever had in my life with some of you guys. You know, yeah. Even as young as 17. Unbelievable. The yeah. intelligence, the knowledge possessed already. But you guys, if you don't understand the prophecies, never going to understand what's really going on. Yeah, yeah. So, just like, um, I, I really feel like uh yeah what's laid out there in the bible is, is is like a guide that just shows you you know how man can stray away from the path the the, the righteous oh, path it's easy i mean like i said I, I look at the whole world as one gigantic spider web with hundreds of strands webs all over right you jump out of capitalism and the anarchism. You're still in the web. Jump over to fascism, communism, whatever ism you want, whatever religion you want, whatever corporation you want. They're all part of his system. Okay? It's all part of that web. The only way is to get off the whole damn thing. Don't stop changing around looking for, you know, a better thing. The better thing is to burn the fucking web. Walk away, leave it alone. You can't fight against it. They have unlimited resources and they're, they're interdimensional beings. How are you going to beat them? David Icke is right, except he never reveals who they really are. And I'll call that guy out one day, okay, for it. Okay, you're misleading people. You take them all the way down here and then you don't, you don't finish. You don't tell them the real solution. You don't tell them who it really is. It ain't reptilian. Just, He's not the only one. I'll rip a new asshole in for if they keep up with their crap. It's just spiritual forces at work. Oh, yeah. Well, it's all gatekeepers. Controlled opposition. That's how way you do it. How you control it, you be the opposition. I mean, Lenin told them this, Marx, years and years ago. They know how to do that. They've been doing it. You know, oh, the governments, well, they use the book yeah. Propaganda by Edward Bernays. If you yep, ain't read yep. that. Man, that's how they manipulate the minds of the masses. It's easy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, another another one that I've been looking at. Um, well, I, I started reading it. And I didn't get that 
too far into it is uh jim keith uh and uh, uh i think it's called uh um engineering mass consciousness i think um written by jim keith yeah uh but yeah there's anyway yeah, there's a lot of there's people who are aware of what's going on but they don't really understand the reasons you know the bottom line the stakes what kind of game are we in this is a game of life bud then the stakes are life and death and oh, for yeah. me it's as exciting as it can get for a sigma like me all the archetypes this is game time man this is game on for me yeah, i'm yeah. coming out of my shell and i'll be out here and doing whatever the hell i gotta do because I'm tired of hiding and not doing anything. <laughs> People are going to know whether they want to or not. You're going to have to. Yeah, here's the book by Jim Keith. It's called Mass Control Engineering Human Erwin. Consciousness. Yep. Mm. Why don't you come out and say hi, Arwen? So, so that's the oh. deal. So, yeah, you got uh, uh, your, got a room, your roommate's uh, Erwin down there. I ain't got no roommate. He's hey, a bum. Hey, he fucking way bone. He's asleep most of the time. He ain't doing shit. Uh, uh, <laughs> what's up, brother? How you doing, Erwin? I'm good, man. How about you? Oh, man. We're just trying to adapt to what's going on with this COVID hysteria, oh, man. man. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, ridiculous. That's fucking yeah. Kobe. Yeah. So when are you coming down next, man? uh yeah i'd love to make it back down there probably I, I i don't know what the idea is about doing the conference again but uh i'd like to make it down there regardless and just kind of oh we'll do some more yeah do do some community stuff with then, you guys there, down there because uh this I, weekend I, i've got to do that several one. people down there now so yeah who's down here man that you know uh this guy todd cave is down there he's uh he's from london i guess that uh he's living down there in mexico uh i'm you know become pretty good uh but not here him. in acapulco yeah he lives there in acapulco oh yeah. okay shit yeah tell i him, know tell him hook up with me and erwin man we'd talk with him yeah 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 we'd love yeah. to man we'd love to meet new folks yeah, I know Bob Stanley's down there, and then um, yeah, uh, Mike Nimitz and and those guys over there, uh, Bob, uh, Bob Podoski. Yeah. So I know I know a few of those. Bob guys Stanley, Bob Stanley knows quite a bit. I like Bob a lot. Yeah, Bob Stanley is an interesting dude for sure. Yeah, yeah. I like talking to him. I, I thought he was coming by today. He he was supposed to come by and get some oil for himself. Oh, cool. But he didn't he didn't make it. So maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it seems like you guys have a pretty cool little uh, community down there of people that are. Well, we got it going. We're, we're trying to find some local poor ones right around here. We can, you know, help out with some food and shit. Cool. We're going to start doing a number of different things just to help. Just be helpful in the neighborhood. Be helpful wherever the hell you are, okay? And that's yeah. why I like, you know, awesome. like what you're doing, what Paulie's doing up in Cuernavaca. Now, we, there's there's good folks all over the place. But the thing is, Greg, you guys just don't know what's in the Bible because y'all have ignored it. You can't ignore it anymore, man. Well, yeah, you're I definitely have need to, to, to if, go if back can, and pull it back gonna, open and read it, yeah. yeah. And I can help. If you got questions, I can help. I got a lot of years. Okay. Yeah, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I'd love to do like a maybe a little Bible study or something. And just, I'll send uh, you I'll send you the link. Okay. Okay. It it is actually a link to what Jesus referred to. He said, "Flee to the mountains." The mountain today is a website. Oh, mountains, yeah. mountains, and in, in the Bible usually refer to rulership. King kings rule from a mountain. All right, so when he's talking about running to the mountains, he's running you about, he's into the about entomology of the word. Yeah, he, what he what what he's referring to run to the house of God. Okay, I'll send you that site when we're done. There is okay. a section on there that you can self study the Bible. Yeah, 
and it's very, very easy and simple to follow along and do. And it's really the only place because the preaching work has been stopped for the first time. Well, that, 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 that really troubles me is that all these churches, uh, I really don't think that they really have a lot of faith because why would they just close down, close themselves down when there's just some government decree that says that you can't gather, you know, anymore and all this stuff. It's like, why wouldn't they defy that if they were truly, if they truly had faith, like, um, okay. But you have to remember Jesus gave the counsel. He was asked when they brought him the coin. He said, is it lawful or not to pay the head tax? And Jesus knew they were just trying to trick him. It was a religious leader. He said, well, whose inscription is on the Roman, coin? Romans 13, right? Yeah, he said, whose inscription is on? No, this is in Matthew. He said, whose inscription is on the coin? And they said, Caesar's. And he said, well, then pay back Caesar's things to Caesar and God's things to God. So he's indicating if Caesar prints the money and he calls for the taxes, give it to him, right? And he also, in Romans 13, as you said, be in subjection to the authorities. Now that is with proviso. The, the, okay? author, the authority is God. Yes, I know. But uh, the, in the Bible itself, the God, God says he allows these governments to rule in the meantime. So don't rebel against them. Jesus did. They charged him with sedition, but he was not seditious. Okay? They'll all charge us with being seditionists and haters of the government. But in actuality, true Christians pay their taxes and follow all the laws of the governments that they're under for the most part. If it restricts their worship of God, then that's different. And this has, but this is different. This is mandated by God himself. This is Bible fulfillment, and we understand it. So the preaching work has stopped. Well, I kind of run it about. Well, I kind of believe that that uh, that text that you just quoted there is misinterpreted, in my opinion. I I really don't think that it means to pay your taxes. I think it means that do you either believe in man's laws or God's laws? Is really what it is really what it's getting at I'll, I'll i'll send you some info you can look at it but i'll give you the it, it'll be an article with scriptural references you look at it okay get convinced yourself i'm yeah. not here to convince you you have to convince you yeah all right i can just share what i've learned yeah. i will share it with some more stuff okay i'll send it to you you can make up your mind if you got other questions let me know i Sounds didn't know good. all this this is 40 years, okay, of accumulated knowledge. You can't do it all in a day. How do you right. eat an elephant? One bite at a time, bro. One bite at a time, that's right. One bite at a time, okay? Yep. That's right. So we do have some time. I feel a lot better. You remember we were chatting back a couple of months ago and I was worried about the spring clean for the May Queen. Yeah. That will count. That will count, okay? You can almost guarantee it. Uh, with like a massive culling it'll be in the springtime oh we got a religious war coming in front of us too i can almost guarantee that there, all the world's religions are ready to fight and then that's probably when the government's going to step in and say now marley you assholes all fighting killing each other in the name of god get the hell out of here good riddance muslims buddhists hindus all of them all going well, yeah, that a lot was of kinda, sense Catholics, all of them gone. That was kind of going to be one of my que- <laughs> that was going to be one of my questions. Is that uh, they're all going? You, they're all false. Do you have any predictions for this year, and then or the end of this 2020, and then five years out, and then do you got anything for ten years out? Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh my goodness! Well. I'm calling the Grand Tribulation, the Great Tribulation. It'll be in 2024 at the latest. Okay. Uh, I think we we are going to see that it unfolds in the same time period that the first century Jews seen in Jerusalem when the Romans left. Because okay? right now they've left. They've backed off. They've even allowed some churches to reopen. 
Okay, this is the time period. Read Matthew 24, 15 through 19. Okay, John 20, uh, Matthew 24, verses 15 through 19. Because those are the scriptures right after where he says, and then the end will come. So what he says next is pretty damn important. So look at those scriptures. All right. Well, and so much for talking about cannabis and doing the power presentation today. We'll have to do that one again, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna have, I, I'm gonna put that PowerPoint out. I don't care who uses it. I want everybody just to know it. I've got it in, in English and Spanish, and I was planning on using it in Spanish down here to teach the doctors and nurses because they love that stuff here. Every doctor I've ever talked to here, they bought. I got customers that are taking it that are doctors. Uh, the formula of the oils that you guys are making. They love it. They love it. Oh, it's impressive. We have one doctor in Mazelon that actually sends customers to it. Is it, it. is it something that you both take? Can you, you do it orally or do you rub it on your skin or is it? Both. We, we've both? got a bunch of them. We've got creams. We've got a face cream. We've got a body lotion. The ladies, the guy, everybody's loving these things. The the face cream people are using it for pain too because it's got enough of the THC in it. Oh wow! So you can rub it right on it. It's good, but it, it really clears up the face and body skin issues really quick. So do you have a small production facility then? I guess there. And Mazawan, okay. it's 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 one hundred percent Mexican owned. I'm the English face for them. Okay. After doing it for about a year, they came and said. Will you take care of all our English customers? Because I was doing it anyways. Oh, so they okay. finally just said, please take care of all we can. Oh, so I, I do. You. I'm probably about half their business with all the distributors that I've got. They oh, love me. Okay. <laughs> they love me. Yeah. We haven't even really got going. And this yeah. is, oh, this is another thing I wanted to mention. I am looking for a strong alpha personality. Yeah. Okay. He can't be a Sigma because... <laughs> you know yeah 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 you know two sigmas ain't gonna do shit right i know everything to do i'm retired i've been retired for 12 years i you, came back out of retirement not to make a fucking peso you've got I came the, out yeah. because this is important you've got what the they did for me they resurrected my life they yeah. gave me another chance same thing with my wife same thing with hundreds of others most of our customers are canadian and american and they're almost all baby boomers and they love this. And when they go back to Canada, Cali or Colorado or Washington, Oregon, they say, we can't get what you guys got. They won't give it to us. Yeah. They say, your shit's the best. Yeah. We know that. Hell yeah. We've, we've had it sent off to Oregon to test to a lab because there are no labs yet in Mexico. Without regulations, nobody's going to invest in a lab to do what? We don't know. So without regulations, they know they're just holding up the industry. I don't care. I really don't care. We're gonna go and grow anyways. But the thing is, that's that oil came back very, very strong. The way that the researchers say the medicine works best, and it was organically clean. That's all we cared for. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So how can people find out more about the you guys stuff and and uh if they want to get in touch or anything like I'm that. I'm going to send you my website and the two groups so you can post them with the link links to to the video, okay? Okay. Uh, well, you you're already in both of the groups, aren't you? The cannabis groups? Are you in uh, those yet? No? I'll have to check. I'll, I'll send you an invite. I'll okay. I'll send them to you after we're done. Okay. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, back to the alpha, I'm looking for an alpha who wants to make a lot of freaking money. I need one who's seriously motivated and can kick ass. I know right. how to run everything. I don't want it. Yeah. I'm tired of doing it. All. When all the businesses I ever owned, I did everything from the taxes, accounting, selling, you name it. I did it all. Yeah. I ain't doing it no more. Okay. Yep. I want me an alpha who can work with an ornery old bastard Sigma. Okay. 
Yeah. Right? But I'll make them a lot of fucking money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the thing about the Sigma is kind of like they're like the uh, the advisor to the, you know, a benevolent king or something like that, right? Oh, when you get to where I'm at, oh, fuck. I can't even believe what, what I can do these days. Uh, it's like one day Yoda's going to come and say, damn, I won't be like him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living large these days, bud. My well, brain yeah, is I mean, working yeah. like you wouldn't believe, but my body is broke to pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? I'm broke to pieces. I yep. need me a a kick-ass alpha. I don't know who it is yet. It Pretty. might be Bob Stanley. Bob, you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Stop fucking griping so much. I love you, man. We can do some shit. <laughs> and there's some others that, that I'm considering. Yeah. But... It's going to be largely based upon whether they're a decent person for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a big thing in business is, uh, yeah, you got to, you know, really have to know who you're dealing with. You really have to trust them a lot. So. Well, I, see, I've got all that experience. I know how to sell without selling, but I, I know how to teach selling. That's all I ever did after I got out of the Air Force got my yeah. real estate license, got selling. I knew salesmen make the most money, all right? Yeah. But this is before I, you know, got fully embarked on my spiritual quest. Yeah. So I had to temper that. I, I did a lot, lot of studying when I was young. Yeah. Um, starting very, very young, maybe nine, 10 years old. I'm reading about the mafia. I'm reading about robber barons, the bankers, JP Morgan, Ooh. the uh duponts all of these people i was learning all the secrets about how to get rich yeah. and i was gonna be rich until i found the narrow road and i said well funny but you know even before then when i was 23 i was friends to several millionaires very wealthy guys and the things that that they had revealed to me were really surprising I had one, he owned a huge tire company, outlets all over the Southwest. He had a 10,000 square foot house, like a 12 car garage with all sorts of Corvettes and shit in it. 600 acre ranch in Central Texas. He had everything. And I'm over at his house, we're sitting there. I, I was tutoring his wife and his daughter-in-law in real estate stuff. So I got to be good friends with them and they invite me out to parties and shit. I'm talking to him one night He's telling me, he said, Paul, I got everything, everything I want, and I ain't fucking happy. I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, I got it all, and, and it didn't bring me happiness. And I never met a millionaire that really was. Yeah. They all, they said all their money caused them was more unhappiness than happiness. Yeah. They never knew who their real friends were. You know, and it's like, shit. Yeah. That money ain't the road, man. Money ain't the road. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I deviated, and I'm not going to taste money. But I got the secrets, bro. <laughs> and I've never used them, and well, I'm busting them out now. Nice. Okay, well, that's, so that's, well, that's I'm looking great. for a smart son of a bitch who wants to, you know, be successful. I can help. All right. Well, if anybody's out there listening, uh, I will have the information for Paul in, in the show description here. And, uh, we're kind and of all the free, weed. all the free weed you can smoke, all the oil you can drink, you know, <laughs> brownies, cookies, gummies. <laughs> well, uh, God, man, you, nice. you do know that the U.S. government actually had the balls to come out one time and say, "Cannabis users may suffer the negative side effects, penis and euphoria." <laughs> Can you imagine yep. if yep. all of us suffered from that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's going to fight their wars, man? Exactly. Yeah, they, you know? can, they can convince <laughs> anybody to do it. They'd all be too, uh, no. too uh, happy. Uh, happy. I'm not killing that guy. What the fuck? Get out of here. Well, I don't want to do that. Why, man. clean that gun? Shit, get out of here, man. Give me the Cheetos. Hand me the food, yeah. <laughs> Hand me some food, man. Let's chill. <laughs> Hey, you know the thing about the, uh, the oils? Hell, uh, 
Yeah. The cannabis oils actually work opposite the way the smoke does. The smoke gives us the munchies, right? We want to eat. Uh huh. The oils suppresses your appetite. Hmm. Interesting. Oh yeah, I know. It suppressed mine. I lost a lot of weight. A lot of people have lost weight. You got to be careful with it. I did the cancer protocol for a couple of months. Uh huh. That almost killed me. Oh okay. I learned the hard lesson because I I couldn't eat. Oh wow. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got a lot of experience in how to use these oils over the last year. Every one of them. Cool. And this is where? Oh, this is the purest form right here. We base all our products on this. This is full extract cannabis oil. Some people call it RSO, Rick Simpson oil, Phoenix Rick Simpson tears. oil. Okay. Phoenix tears. Okay. It, those those are are really no longer any any use. Nobody makes RSO. Because that was made with napalm, naphtha. Okay? Nobody makes it like that. If they do, they're stupid. Full okay. extract cannabis oil. This is the way they used to make it all the time. Okay? We use um, pure grain alcohol. All right? And these guys are experts at this. One of these guys has worked at mobile oil for many years. The other cool. two grew up The other two grew up in the Golden Triangle. Ah. <laughs> uh. Up Ooh. on the up in Sonora, Sinaloa, Durango. Yeah. That's the Golden Triangle. So these guys know their stuff, baby. Yeah, they man. know their stuff. Yeah, it's uh, it's great, man, and I uh, really appreciate. And there is there, there's a great opportunity for people who want to get into cannabis. Just yeah. call me, man, or friend me on Facebook. I'll help you get going. Cool. We got people all over the world in my groups now that want to be distributors everywhere. So we're going to be shipping worldwide, hopefully soon. The, the thing is, the shipping is outrageous and some of the laws are still prohibited. Yeah. So yep. Yeah. You guys all need to do your part and tell, tell your pinchy politicians. Con congressmen to get their act Stop together. that bullshit. We're tired. We know your lies. Okay. Yep. This shit's medicine. Get the hell out of here. Amen, brother. Amen. So, uh, yeah, thank you for your time, Paul. And uh, we're coming up at the end of the there, show here. Up, so. <laughs> coming we up always on the share. End of the show. We always share, bro. <laughs> yep. So, uh, so I'll leave you with any last words that you'd like to say to the audience, and uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, end the show. Anybody got any questions about anything you guys heard tonight? I'm always available. My customers, my distributors, my friends, they know. You want to talk, I'll talk. If you want to confirm, Erwin has seen some stuff that even took his hair and did the buckwheat, you know? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> his hair stood straight up and said, what the? <laughs> he's seen some stuff because he's been around me for a few months now. Yeah. He's being strange shit, ain't he, Erwin? <laughs> It's going to get stranger, too, believe me. We will see things that, oh, I wish we didn't have to face, bro. I really don't. But yeah. it's going to get worse before it gets better. And all yeah. I can give you counsel, read the Bible. Okay? Cool. Read it. Ask questions. Look at it. Become more loving. Become kind. Give more than you take. Give cool. more than you take. Even in a lot of the Satanist songs, they tell you this. They said, give it. Be love and get it. I'll show it. I'll prove it by putting them songs up. Cool, they man. They say it themselves, and we don't pay attention. Yeah. Yep. Be well, loving, be kind. Great. That's a great note to leave on. And, uh, wow. yeah, once again, Paul, thank you again for your time and sitting down to talk with me. I really appreciate you uh, taking that time out to uh, come on and chat with me. Anytime. I hope to do it again with you, man. I yeah, really man. Do. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. We'll do it again. I will. 